best guess is 150 gallons a minute based on how long it took the water to yank the five gallon bucket out of my hands this morning and I tried to time filling it the next section is just clean have to go down to this jungle I do not want to lug these eight foot by 18 inch boom sections up here and try to get them down through that trap so my one remaining wide boom section that I was going to put here I'm going to cut it down taper it down to about eight or nine inches to the small end shove that down in there and all the other ones will be put in from below add to uh add some sideboards on the tight turns had to add this to prevent that temporary fix. Little gap here doesn't matter at all. This is a big problem here because all this water is hitting it with wooden cross piece flying out the side. So I cut it out and replaced it with wire. That's quite a torrent up there and we're getting most of it. This spring fed stream runs most of the year and runs heavy when it's raining. This is the first year that much of the water in this stream has disappeared into the ground. What I've done with this one so far is unscrew the short verticals on this side, unscrew the sideboard using that as a saw guide. I'm going to cut this one down to this pencil line here. Put the side back on, shorten the uh, braces as needed, and I hope I can get all the succeeding flumes out of one board width. If I get it down to one board width, I can do without all this extra bracing. And that will make them much lighter, easier to handle. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Not quite enough battery. Okay, did we not get through the bottom everywhere? Here. My first thought was that the blade hadn't gone entirely through the board the full length. What it was, was screws that I hadn't seen because they were covered with sawdust. Is that another one? Yes it is. It's on solid right here. It's cut all the way through. Oh, there is a screw. It'll all go back right in the same holes. The angle is intentional to make it easier maybe to slide it down through the briar patch. 
much lighter than previous ones. This will be a short one, making use of available materials. This is thinner than this, but I don't think the water will care. You now all of these pre-cut are way too long, but I can get an underneath and a side brace out of each one. Side screw will screw this to this. Now I need sides. Sides need to be 64 inches. So I got a lot of 3 inch over here. I looked through my piles of lumber, found some 3 8 but it was either too narrow or too short. Nothing thin over there. So I'm going to have to make my own 3 8 boards. Well, I'm going to have to cut some stuff down. That means clearing off the sawmill. I haven't run that in a long time. So got to clean things up around here so we can resaw some boards. And here's the setup. And I keep uh, rethinking this as I go, so here's what I had planned. This is inch and a half. The one on the bottom is just, I cannot cut within an inch of the bunk, so I need a riser there. Inch and a half here. I set the blade on top. Note that on the scale. Crank the scale down one half inch. Subtract the kerf from that half inch and I've got a three eighths board one inch remaining. Go down another half and I've got a three-eighths board and one half remaining. That would work. And then I thought about it some more. I don't need walls this high. It'd be a waste of wood. Cut them in half and it's not high enough I'm afraid. But I have other boards not this wide but wide enough for walls. So I will rip this in half right down the middle. End up with two 11 sixteenths pieces for the bottoms and then I'll go make the walls out of some narrower stock. They're clamped together because I have the uh, log stop set so low afraid it might jump over. Don't want them to do that. Go ready the mill here and get busy. It's been a while. I do have lapel mics. I'll try to remember to use them next time. Half one. Two. Half. Look in here, make sure grass haven't taken up residence. I checked gas and oil, made sure the mill was ready to go. They have not. That rubbing sound you hear is my blade scraper scraping off rust. It almost always starts on the second pull. Gotta love that, with the blade resting on top of that inch and a half board, the index is exactly at three inches. If I go down to two and three sixteenths, it should split the board right down the middle. The blade sounds a little weird. I didn't check the log to see how long it's been on the mill. It may be pretty dull. After passing the first log stop, I raise it and then remove the clamp and lower the next log stop. Sawing so close to steel makes me nervous.
Now I remove the clamp and raise the center log stop. As we'll see in a moment, I should have used the sawmill's clamp at the far end. These two hand clamps so close to each other will not be able to hold the top board in place. The problem is, when the log stops are low enough that my blade guard will clear them, they're too low to hold that top board. So my quick, without thinking about a solution is, put one clamp closer to the blade and the other clamp at the far end of the boards to improve the geometry. Now maybe I can finish the cut. Or not. But now the blade has passed the last stop so I can raise it again, which requires loosening the log clamp. Now, maybe I can finish the cut. There's got to be a better way. Oh, that was fun. We have here five eighths. We have here, which was to read it, three quarters. And here it measures three quarters, almost, yeah, sixteenth under. So these came out about right. I'm happy. Now I have to make some three eighths to finish off that short one. Cut another one of these first, maybe two more. Uh, I did something I hate to do. First time I raised this out of the way to get past a very big log, I cut into a log stop. But I have to work close to the log stops. Can't have the blade guard down. I hope I remember to put it back when I'm through with this operation. Looking good.
with all the wide boards out. Now I have a place to stack the boards that are too small for the sides of the flume. I flopped the boards to put the good one on top. I used to have a bunch of wooden log stops that would be perfect for this situation, but I don't know where they are. I have only one left. So the solution is to play musical log stops. The first one is down below the board. After the blade is past it, I will raise that one and lower the next one, and so on down to the end. repositioning the clamp behind the cut. Well, started on the second pull after weeks and weeks of idleness. I'm pleased. Now, yeah, cut this in half, and I will have the sides for this short one up here. Except, this is two inches too short. So if I make the cut in the center, but angle it one inch, is this, well, yeah, I can do that. i got to be careful which way I cut it, though. And it is coming right up on 5 o'clock. Since I started doing videos, I've noticed how much I pause between every few words in a sentence. I don't know if I've done that all my life and didn't know it. I do it now because of asthma. Just don't know. But I spend an awful lot of time editing video, cutting out these pauses between phrases. Drives me nuts when people talk this way, and here I am doing it. Five o'clock, it's gonna be dark soon. It's raining in an hour or so. So I need to get some of this stuff put away. Starting with this beer. Oh, 
lot lighter. Oh. A whole lot lighter. I'll drop this one off at the end of the trail. Tomorrow, I will make some more narrow ones. Lighter, easier to carry. In my age, easier to carry means a lot. Thanks for watching.